Welcome back, guys. This is Jason, KM4ACK. Today, we're going to take a look at peer-to-peer -peer messages using RDOP and Pat Winlink. Stick around, and we'll get right to it. Hey, before we get going today, I need to give a shout-out to Jim Ryan and Stephen Looper. Those guys are the newest uh, members of Patreon. If you guys would like to help support the channel, I'll leave a link to the Patreon page down in the description below. And something new we're doing is we're giving all the patrons over at Patreon early access to most of the videos that come out on the channel. So be sure to check that out. All right, so a couple of weeks ago, we looked at peer-to-peer uh, -peer messages over 2-meter packet. Today, we're going to explore doing that over HF using RDOP. So, uh, again, I'm going to use two different uh, stations. My brother-in-law is here serving as the control operator for my mobile station, and we're using his call sign of W4RPW in the mobile. So you can see his call here, and you see uh, that it's the mobile station right up here at the top. And then we're going to be using the station inside uh, the shack here as uh, the server station. Now, this sets up very similar to the way the 2-meter packet peer-to-peer uh, -peer setup was uh, done, but we need to enable RDOP. So, the first thing we're going to do is uh, we're going to go into the PAT configure file. So, from your terminal, PAT configure. Once that opens up, we're going to come down here to where it says listen. And before, if you remember, uh, you could use Telnet uh, if you were doing something like peer-to-peer uh, -peer over the Arden Mesh network. If you were wanting to use 2-meter packets, you would put AX25 here. Uh, in this case, we're going to use RDOP. So inside of those brackets and inside qu quotation marks, we're just going to enter RDOP. So that's it. We're going to tell our station to be listening over RDOP for incoming connections. So to get out of this, we're going to press Control X, Y, and Enter. Okay, now you'll notice that I've got two tabs open uh, up here in the terminal. So I'm going to go back to the first tab here, and I'm inside my RDOP directory. So if we list out that directory, you'll see that my PI RDOPC modem is right here inside of this directory. So we're going to go ahead and start the RDOPC modem with this command. Now guys, if you need some help with some of these commands and things, I will leave this down in the description below. But if you go back and watch my uh, installing Pat Winlink on a Raspberry Pi video series, a lot of these questions can get answered for you inside of that series. We will not be using rig control today through Pat. I will be using it over here through FL Rig, and I'm already established on 7080. Okay, so back over here, though, we're going to go ahead and start the RDOPC modem. And we'll just leave that running there. And coming back to the second tab in our terminal, I'm going to go ahead and say PAT HTTP. And you'll notice that it tells you right here that it's listening for incoming traffic on RDOP. It started the HTTP service at this web address here. Now the 0, .0, 0.0.0.0 .0 tells us basically that we can access this either locally or from something uh, connected over the network. So maybe you connected your uh, iPhone or your tablet to the Raspberry Pi's hotspot, then you could still access PAT through the web browser on your wireless device. And then the last line here just tells us that the modem has been initialized. And the last thing I'm going to do here is I'm just going to go ahead and open up the web browser so that we can navigate over to the PAT mailbox. And from inside the mailbox now, you'll see right here that it tells us we are listening on RDOP. So the server portion is set up and my, uh, my portable station will be listening for incoming connections. Now let's head back over to the mobile, uh, the Raspberry Pi in the mobile, so we can initiate that connection. Okay, now here we are again on the mobile station. You can see that right here with the W4RPW call sign. 
And let's go ahead and compose a message. And we're going to send this to my call sign to be transferred peer-to-peer -peer back to my portable setup. So we'll just do uh, test RDOP peer-to-peer. -peer. And we will go ahead and check the peer-to-peer -peer only connection here again. And then we'll just say test for video in the main body. And we'll go ahead and post that up. Now, one of the issues I ran into here, uh, my mobile station and my shack is entirely too close together. Even at 5 watts, I was overloading things. So I did have to put an attenuator in line uh, with my shack rig. And I think I've got it uh, tuned down to about 250 milliwatts. Uh, so I did have to do that to get uh, this working just because these antennas are so close together. All right, so let's go ahead and initiate that connection. So we'll say action and connect. And some of this is already filled in because I was playing with this before the video started. Uh, but you will choose RDOP as your transport here. And then the target call sign is just the base call sign, no SSID. So if you saw the peer-to-peer -peer connections over packet, you'll remember we had to use an SSID of one. But when you're using RDOP, you don't need the SSID at all. All right, so let's go ahead and initiate that connection. And it is connected up. You can see that right up here at the top. And we'll go ahead and click on the out box. You can see that message sitting there ready to go. And then I'll zoom in down here on this bottom box so that you can watch that message pass. And it does happen uh, fairly quickly, not quite as quick as 2 meter, but it is still uh, a fairly quick connection. So if you find yourself uh, maybe out of range for two meter work uh, due to line of sight limitations, swapping over to HF might be a solution for you. Now you can also see that data starting to transfer right up here at the top. It's going to give you a visual indicator of that, uh, of that message being passed. So you can see with, uh, you, you can't hear the packets or the radios going back and forth, uh, but you can see the visual indicator here. It's up to 38% now. And each time that uh, ack and knack happens between the radios, the bar will progress just a little bit further. So again, not as quick as working two meter. If you've got that option, that's definitely the way to go. But HF, uh, when you don't have line of sight, will definitely get the job done. So that message just left the outbox here. So let's go ahead and jump back to the portable station. And in the inbox, you see our message right there. And we get an indicator right down here in the bottom right. So there is one more tool that you can add to your toolbox. Uh, I believe now we've covered peer-to-peer -peer connections over an Arden network. We've covered peer-to-peer -peer connections over 2-meter packet. And in this video, we've done peer-to-peer uh, -peer connections using RDOP over HF. What are you going to use? Well, that all depends on your circumstances. Uh, provided uh, propagation is good, then we can use HF, RDOP, peer-to-peer, -peer, and move a lot of data really quick. Uh, if, you know, band conditions aren't cooperating with you, you might have to fall back on another tool such as JSA Call to get the job done. But it's good to have a lot of different tools so that uh, depending on what situation you're faced with, how much data you got to move, uh, what the propagation conditions are, you can go into that box and retrieve the most appropriate tool. One of the great things about WinLink and uh, JS8 Call is that you don't have to sit at the radio waiting for a message to come through. So if you're trying to use this during a emergency type situation, uh, maybe a hurricane or a tornado or something else like that is affecting you and your area, and you have a plan established beforehand with others that you want to communicate with, then you can quickly set this up. You're going to draw very little battery, uh, or you're going to take very little battery power to keep the station on the air if it's just sitting there idle and listening. Uh, so you're only looking at the uh, amperage draw of the radio on receive and then the Raspberry Pi uh, when it's sitting there idle. 
So you, you can probably use less than half an amp off of a battery and sustain this station for a long period of time. Uh, and like I said, again, that's JS8 Call or Winlink. Both of those can sit there idle and be waiting for messages to come through. So it's a really a, a two really good tools to use, especially during emergency uh, situations where you don't have time to necessarily sit there and babysit the radio. You can fire it up, leave it in a listen mode, and if you've got a, uh, you know, a, a plan worked out ahead of time with other people, it can just be sitting there waiting for messages to be delivered. All right, guys, I hope that gets you up and running with HF Peer-to-Peer -peer using PAT and the RDOP modem. We will see you guys on the next video. Until then, 7-3.